To have the opportunity to talk about a topic which most people won't give airtime and are too afraid to talk about is very important to me. I've been thinking about this idea for over 20 years and finally decided it was time to tell the story. This is a topic that everybody's too scared to talk about and no one knows how to deal with it. I don't want others to have to go through the experience that I went through or my clients. Welcome to Hello Darling Stories from Under the Blanket. Introducing taboo topics and untold stories to our viewers. Today, my guest is Vanessa Verscher, author of Beach Fight, the book exposing female-on-female -female bullying in the workplace. Vanessa is an Australian business psychologist and coach who is passionate about unlocking leadership potential. She's a highly regarded, trusted advisor to high-level executives and Fortune 100 organizations. Hello, darling. Hello, darling. <laughs> Welcome to my show. Thank you. I don't do that as well as you, though, Barbara. That's, it's a matter of opinion. What made you write, what inspired you to write this bitch fight? Look, I'd been sitting on this for quite some time and I was watching all of the work coming out with the increased emphasis on diversity and inclusion and gender equality. And Sheryl Sandberg put out this book that everybody may know about called Lean In. And not once did she mention how women are getting in their own way and some of the ways we behave to actually prevent each other from climbing the ladder and being successful at work. And so that's kind of what the impetus was to actually get me looking at the topic initially and then taking it to another level with writing a book. And why do you think female bullying is such a taboo topic? The general perception is men bully women. And well, I would say, yeah. especially in Me Too yeah. times, it's, it's enforced this belief. Yeah. Yeah, there's a couple of things. I think the topic itself is not politically correct. and. Uh, a lot of the women that are going out and talking about women bullying other women are typically voted off the island. I know of authors who have received death threats from other women because they're erroneously perceived as um, kind of widening the chasm in the gender equality debate. So if you talk about women bullying women, you're seen as a bit of a traitor, even though it's actually a very big issue that is just not given airtime. Vanessa, in your book, you're talking about Catherine. You're talking about journey in a corporate world. Mm. It is fictional, but based on a true story. It is, yeah. May I ask, bullying can lead to depression. Mm. Bullying can even lead to suicide. Yeah. In many, many cases. Mm. How much of Vanessa is in Catherine and in the book? Wow, that's a very powerful question. Look, I think I come from a history of bullying myself and probably one of the ways that I've been able to help other women is because I understand the experience. And the effects of women bullying women are deleterious more than if a, if a man, man actually does it, to the point where a lot of women who have the experience often take their own lives. In fact, one of the reasons why I was inspired to write Bitch Fight is that I had two clients in executive positions who both took their own lives at a, as a result of being bullied by other women. And when I started to talk about it at the organisations that they worked at, people didn't believe that it was true. They were kind of, that doesn't happen. Women don't bully other women. I mean, how can a woman bully another woman? Yeah. Women are caring, they're kind. They don't take down other women, but actually that's not true. And so when I was starting to look at the gender equality debate, not seeing that as one of the reasons why women don't get ahead was a very big concern to me. I think that in order to answer the question, we have to look at ourselves and what we're doing as women, our 50%, to stop ourselves climbing the ladder and actually achieving true gender equality. And it's a very big blocker to that. Vanessa, what made you become a business coach? 
So I started off in life as an organisational um, therapist actually and was going down that path and then realised from a very young age that I had this ability to really listen to what people are saying, to understand and see through right into the soul of other human beings. And even from when I was five, I remember I was at a party with my parents and they lost me for a while and they were looking and looking and looking and found me at this party talking to an older man. And I know how that looks, you know, I can imagine what they must have been thinking. But actually this gentleman was telling me his troubles, his life story. And I realised early on that I had this gift to actually really understand what people wanted and to try and help them move through whatever their troubles or struggles were. And so becoming a business psychologist and a coach was around reaching larger audiences. It was about working with leaders and people in organisations that actually had the charge of sometimes thousands of people to actually be able to have greater impact on the lives of other human beings. Vanessa, you wrote the book together with um, Jean-Francois Duchemont. Yeah. Who is a Canadian. He is. Organisational psychologist. He is, and psychotherapist. And so psychotherapist. he's a therapist, not me. Now, how is the experience writing about female bitch fight bullying with a male being your co being your Yeah, co that's such a great question. Look, it was an amazing experience. And part of the reason why I asked Jean-Francois to co-author the book with me is I thought we need to have real balance in perspectives. He's a very metrosexual male. He's also a psychotherapist. So he, I wouldn't say he's soft because he'd kill me for saying that, <laughs> but he's that perfect blend of masculine and feminine energy. And he also has a daughter. And that's probably been one of the biggest triggers we've found for getting men and male leaders in organisations to really listen to what's happening is when you make it personal and you give it meaning and you start asking them about how they would feel if it was their daughter that was being bullied, it changes the narrative. It makes them care. And then we start to see real traction on this topic and some real solutions that help the person that's being bullied. I think our Prime Minister, Scott Morrison, <laughs> would agree on it. <laughs> no comment. No comment. Vanessa, another question. Obviously, you addressing corporate bullying, female bullying, but, oh, but we can't separate completely. Women bully women for certain reasons yeah. outside corporate world before they become corporate. Yeah. Would you give me five, three top reasons why females are so skilled in bullying? Yeah, I wouldn't say skilled. I'd say that if you go back to Darwinian theory or Charles Darwin, who wrote the whole theory of evolution, he talks about the, the fact that when we're fighting for scarce resources, as are women to actually be heard and be seen, there's natural competitiveness between mm -hmm. women. So if you listen to Darwin, he would say to you that it's part of our DNA, that we're naturally hardwired to fight amongst each other to actually gain a place at the top and be heard and seen. But I think that that takes away the actual choice of women. And what it's really about is understanding our inherent biases that are preventing us from actually allowing other women to stake a claim, to stand alongside us, being aware of how we judge other women and how harsh we are about that. And a lot of that social conditioning too, Barbara. I mean, where if you think about from a very young age, Mean Girls starts in schools. It doesn't start in the corporate world. It just gets worse once we get to the corporate world and a lot of women have a lot more power where they are fighting to actually have their place at the top and to be seen and be heard. So it's a very much part of survival of the fittest, which actually brings out the worst in female behaviour because there are so few of us. And that's part of the issue. You talk in your book about Queen Bee in a mm. corporate place. Mm. Can you build up on it? Absolutely. So when you think Queen Bee, I want you to think Miranda from Devil Wears Prada. So if you have that character in your mind, it's a woman who's clawed her way to the top and believes that other women should have it just as hard to get there. And because she's trying to protect her position, she keeps other women down and makes their life a misery so that they don't actually rise the ranks. They lose all their confidence and they have no way of rising up the ranks and toppling her off her throne. Um, and that's how she protects her position. So that's what a queen bee is. And 
it's absolutely horrendous, the tactics that a lot of those queen bees use. Wow. Now, if I was to ask you about three top major tactics that female bullying will Yeah. So female bullies use. typically use tactics that we don't see. They're almost like invisible tactics. The first one would be spreading, spreading rumours, for example. False also, rumours. False rumours. Um, so, for example, there's a tactic called slut shaming, mm -hmm. which is a woman will spread rumours about another woman that she's highly promiscuous at work, so that decreases the sense of her power and value in the organisation and really starts to uh, cause a real problem with her reputation and, and, and serious damage to reputational risk. So that's a big one. The other one would be um, eyeball rolling, things like that. Um, Show me. So going like this. You know, it would be uh, telling lies about the woman. It would be getting her to question her own competence, for example. So telling her that she did something when she didn't. Um, so everything that's indirect, but usually it relates to either that slut shaming, that, spre that spreading rumours or social ostracism, mm -hmm. which is being excluded from things is a big form of bullying. You have a chapter that says it's all about sex. It's all about sex. So bullying, as I said before, is linked very much to this fact that with so few women in positions at the top, we tend to rely on our DNA or instinct to stay in those positions. And so you see women not even aware of the fact that they're biased towards other women, feeling competitive, feeling jealous, and some of them try to take the other woman down. Not always, but that's often at the basis, this feeling of threat. Um, and that's why it's all about sex. Can anyone be a bully? Yes. Yes, they can. Do you believe that you have to be a little bit a psychopath to be a bully? I don't think so. I think bullying um, can be somebody that is not aware of their own biases. They're not aware of how they're being triggered and they actually start to go after somebody, um, but then recognise maybe that they are and they stop. So I've seen reformed bully, bullies, for example, women that have recognised that they're mistreating other women and then they stop and catch themselves. There are psychopaths though as well, and there's a very big difference between psychopathology and people behaving badly, and you have to know what the difference is. How do you spot a psychopath in your organisation or in your world before he spots you? Yeah, so a psychopath is somebody who actually engages in frequent bullying behaviour. So they have their eye on a target for whatever reason, and they consistently go after that same target and actually get joy from pain and suffering of that target. And it never stops until that person is decimated, leaves the organisation, uh, or takes their own life, which is what one of my clients did, unfortunately. And that's essentially what happened to her. Very sorry to hear about it. Mm. Vanessa, are men aware of corporate female bullying in a companies? I mean, they do their own parts, those that do, but are they aware of the female bullying culture? You know, that's a really good question. When we actually prepared to write the book, we did some research and we took this question to the street in Montreal and in Australia. Mm -hmm. And we asked men what they thought about women bullying women. Mm -hmm. 80% of them said, what are you talking about? That doesn't happen where I work. Mm -hmm. And 20% of them said, oh yeah, we know that it kind of happens, but aren't women just bitchy sometimes? So there's a real lack of awareness on the part of men around the fact that this actually is going on and that it's a huge problem, particularly in the Australian corporate landscape where 70% 70, 70 of female executives report being bullied by another woman if they have been bullied. So out of the bullying cases, for women, 70% of women have been bullied by other women. So just sit with that for a second. It's unbelievable. It's actually. unbelievable. Yes, so it's e doc, it doc, survival instinct. I take the phrase from your book. Yeah. It's envy, it's jealousy, mm. it's tall poppy syndrome, mm. it's cancer culture. Is coercive control. Yeah, yeah. It's also the fact that women have learnt in male-dominated cultures that if you don't behave in the same way 
as the males, you will not fit in. Thank you. So that's what we learn. And if you add good looks into the mix, well, that's a whole other ball game. I was just going to say, it almost puts the boys club, men's club, in a better light than we, than we have the picture of. However, mm -hmm. it's not about competing. It's about talking about two wrong ones that's in right. a corporate world or in our world. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Vanessa, you dedicated your book to your daughters. Mm -hmm. You witnessed suicide of your clients. You went through your own bullying. Yeah. You wrote this book hoping for what? What's the main message? First of all, of course, creating awareness. Mm -hmm. How are we going to help women out there, young girls, young women going into corporate world? Mm -hmm. I wrote it for my daughter because I wish I'd had the skills and knowledge to be able to deal with this effectively myself when I was her age. I didn't and as a result suffered greatly uh, as a result of being bullied and this book was written for my daughter to equip her with the skills and the abilities to be able to navigate a very real situation that can happen to women at school, at work. They ha we have to know what we need to do about it and we have to build our self-confidence, understand what's happening and have the words to fight back. How do we bring resilience to young women in a corporate world or any world? I just can, can walk out from, you know, all, all surroundings. Hmm? We have to help women to use their voice. We have to know that they have to have the confidence and courage to use their voice and stand up for themselves, even if it shakes. If there is something that is wrong that is happening to you or those around you, you have to go and report it. You have to go and tell somebody about it. And these days it, it's a lot easier, particularly with movements like Me Too and more consciousness around diversity and inclusion, which is opening up more avenues to give women voice to actually start to talk about these things that previously it, it wasn't as easy. And yes, you say in your book, rightly so, um, that women have to work harder than men that equality doesn't exist. And anybody who thinks different is like believing that Father Christmas is Easter Bunny. That's right, that's right. That's very shocking from someone who is so much in corporate world to hear it. Yeah, the dial isn't moving fast enough. And so, you know, the big impetus for me in writing Bitch Fight and talking about women bullying women is, it is one of the major reasons why there are gender inequality issues at work and in the world. We know about all of the ones like, you know, um, cultural conditioning. We know about the pay gap. We know about masculine cultures. We know about stereotyping and all of these things that we talk about, the double bind effect. But we don't talk about the one issue that maybe women have more control over, which is ourselves. You know, it's really hard sometimes to look in the mirror and say, you know what? I'm actually biased towards other women and I'm going to do something about it. So by raising consciousness of your own biases, maybe we can actually start to change the behaviours. You say in your book, if women would rule the world. I had the joke that if women would wor rule the world, there would be no wars mm. because the countries wouldn't talk to each other. <laughs> you have another I comment, do. I obviously do. metaphorically, and yet wishful thinking. Can you bring it to our viewers before they read your book? Yeah, absolutely. So in preparation for the book, I did a lot of work with colleagues of Dr. Jane Goodall at Taronga Zoo, looking at the bonobo chimps. And for those people that aren't aware, the bonobo chimps we share 98.5% of our DNA with. Wow. They are a tribe of chimps governed by women it's called a matriarchy, also known as a gynecocracy, which is a really funny word. Yes. And they don't fight. They make love and not war. And so I think if we take an example of what happens when women actually rule the tribe, what could be possible for us and how could that really catapult or accelerate our ability to build a community of equals working together? How beautiful. And that's what we need, isn't it? Men and women working together to build a community of equals, that's what's going to take. It's going to take all of us. And celebrate our differences. Celebrate not, our differences. Not use it as a competition. That's right. 
you also say in your book, you're not entitled to bully someone because you have been bullied before. We're talking about the ripple effect, yeah. but very often, and that's what I want to ask you, it's a ripple effect, can be conscious or can be subconscious. Mm, absolutely. And I think as a person, you make a choice. You know, I have never been tempted to bully another human being in my life, but there are some people who feel the need to do so. And I think it's a personal choice. If you haven't done the work, if you haven't actually worked on the trauma of your past, then you're more likely going to be uh, repeating that past. So for those of you who have been bullied, be really conscious of how it's, effective, how it's affected you. Do the work to actually work through it and be really cognizant of, of how you're actually treating other people because it might be something that you're not aware of. That's wonderful. Yeah. And the second, we expect a bit fight too in works. You know, I'm not going to write another book about bullying, but what really struck me when I actually published this book were how many males came to me, how many male colleagues and clients, and said to me, Vanessa, why didn't you write about us? Mm -hmm. And I said, what do you mean? And they said, we are still recovering from being bullied by a woman. Mm. But there is nothing in your book that talks about men being bullied by women. And so I was really shocked by that and I kind of felt like I hadn't covered all the ground in the book. I hadn't even stopped to think about the fact that men had been bullied too. So I'm sorry about that. I hadn't covered that off, but I became very aware of my own uh, biases in not thinking about the fact that men themselves have gone through this. And most men that shared their experiences with me still emoted and cried and were almost became childlike when they talked about being bullied by a woman. So it's really interesting. Vanessa, I always give my guest and I give you now a magic wand and you have two wishes, one for the world and one for yourself. What would be your two wishes? I'd like people to really focus on all of the unique talents and contributions they bring to the world. Know that anything is possible not to be looking at other people, wishing they were someone else and tearing each other down, but actually celebrating what they bring and stepping forward with those things to create an extraordinary place. And for myself, I want people to live in peace. I want us to have an inclusive world where we do make love and not war, where we celebrate the differences, where we're tolerant of one another um, and where we're patient with one another as well. Vanessa, thank you so much for being on my thank show. Thank you so much. Thanks.